The Puki was a light landmine detection vehicle with mine protected armored vehicle MPAV features developed by the Republic of Rhodesia in November 1976. It was used by the Rhodesian army during the final stages of the Rhodesian Bush War 1964-1979 for road demining tasks. Hello and welcome to another Chang Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host Tony and today I will be covering the Puki Light Landmine Detection Vehicle. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tang Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. In 1960, the British colony of Southern Rhodesia, under the control of the white minority, took steps to become independent. However, in 1964, the new Labour British Prime Minister Harold Wilson stated that he did not intend to grant independence to colonies governed by a white minority unless a democratic constitution was introduced instead of meritocratic and segregationist policies. Ian Smith, the right-wing party leader, proclaimed on November 11, 1964, the independence of Southern Rhodesia from the United Kingdom with a unilateral declaration of independence. This officially created the Republic of Rhodesia. Immediately, the United Nations Security Council met to draw up resolution inviting all member states not to recognize the Republic of Rhodesia and not to provide it with any kind of assistance. Subsequently, heavy economic sanctions were imposed, prohibiting trade and financial negotiations with the nation. Obviously, the majority black population did not stand by idly. Pro-Chinese Zimbabwe People's Revolutionary Army, ZIPRA, led by Joshua Nkomo, and the pro-Soviet Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army, ZANLA, led by Robert Mugabe, were created to fight for the liberation from segregation. The People's Republic of China provided equipment to ZIPRA, while the Soviet Union provided equipment to ZANLA. These fought on two fronts against the Rhodesian army, in some cases even fighting each other. During the Rhodesian Bush War, Zipra and Zandla guerrillas mined the roads that were periodically traveled by both civilian and military convoys. The white population, estimated at 290,000 out of 6.93 million inhabitants in 1978, was not concentrated in a single region, but in various settlements scattered throughout the nations. The guerrillas used mine as a cheap strategy to isolate garrisons and settlements, terrorize the civilian population, and block or delay supply convoys. It was a successful tactic. In fact, a poorly or not at all trained guerrilla equipped with a simple shovel and a mine could destroy a civilian truck loaded with precious materials or a military vehicle killing or injuring several soldiers. Between 1971 and 1972, only three vehicles were hit by IEDs or mines, two military and one civilian. One of the two military accidents occurred on December 23, 1972 and caused the death of Corporal Norman Moore, while three other soldiers were seriously injured. In time, however, more substantial supplies of explosives arrived, which allowed guerrillas to increase the power of the IEDs. More supplies of Soviet-made TM-46 mines along with the more powerful IEDs destroyed cars, trucks, or buses that passed over, causing dozens of deaths even among civilians. The Rhodesian army needed vehicles that could detect mines without having to damage or destroy the vehicle in order to detonate a mine. Rhodesia had developed mine-resistant vehicles. However, after an explosion, these vehicles needed very expensive and very long repairs that put a strain on the now empty state coffers. The University of Rhodesia was brought in to find a solution, and it became clear that the only way to solve the problem was to find a vehicle with a minimum ground pressure to drive over mines without detonating them. The Rhodesian mechanical engineer, Walter Ernst Conchal, designed the Puki. On the prototype, however, only one Milton pan was mounted on the front arm. It was later decided to mount it on the sides of the vehicle. Frame Structure and Engine Incredibly, the base of the Puki was a Volkswagen Combi Type 2, better known in the common imagination as the Hippie Fan. Ernst Konschel used the chassis of the Volkswagen Combi Type 2 T1 and T2 to develop the MPAV, Mine Protected Armored Vehicle, Leopard Security Vehicle. 700 of which were produced. 
and then another 76 for the light landmine detection vehicle Puki. The original Volkswagen Type 1600 four-cylinder 1584cc horizontally opposed petrol engine delivering 68 horsepower was kept mounted at the rear. The Combi's original four-speed transmission was also kept unchanged. The top speed of the Puki was 100 km per hour. Surprisingly, the speed at which it operated during mine detection operations was 80 km per hour, a record speed still unbeaten today. To provide even more safety, each part attached to the frame was bolted with special shear bolts. In case of detonation, the component impacted by the explosion would be blown off, decreasing the risk of overturning the vehicle. At the end of the modification, the Puki weighed less than 2 tons battle ready. A Puki cost only 11,000 Rhodesian dollar, 17,600 US dollar with a 1975 exchange rate, while the repair of a vehicle damaged by a mine cost an average 17,000 Rhodesian dollars or 27,200 US dollars, making a Puki the best and cheapest choice for Rhodesia. Tires In order to reduce the ground pressure of this landmine detection vehicle, Formula 1 tires were mounted. After an F1 race held in South Africa in 1976, dozens and dozens of Formula 1 tires remain in South Africa, which sold them for a few cents of a dollar each to the Republic of Rhodesia. Thanks to these low-pressure tires, the Puki, weighing just under 2 tons fully loaded, had a ground pressure of only 0.21 kg per centimeter, less than a human foot. This pressure was so low that it did not even activate anti-personnel mines as it passed, making it a perfect vehicle for mine detection. Even today, the Puki holds the record for being the only vehicle capable of passing over a pressure-activated anti-tank or anti-personnel mine without activating it. Another great advantage of Formula 1 tires was their width. This was, in most cases, greater than the diameter of the hole that the militiamen dug for the mine. Consequently, the tire passed over the excavated ground without even touching the pressure fuse of the mine. Capsule. There was no roof, an expedient that helped the driver in the hottest day of the operation, but there was a roll bar on the back to protect the driver and help get him out in case the vehicle overturned. The interior of the capsule was very simple. There was a simple padded seat with a seat belt, a gear shift in the middle between the driver's legs, and clutch accelerator and brake levers on the floor. Unfortunately, not much is known about the South African Milton landmine detecting pans mounted on the sides of the capsule. When not in use, they were lifted off the ground by two steel chains operated directly by the driver inside the capsule. To protect them from shocks, splinters, or dust, the detectors were protected by very thin rectangular steel plates that did not interfere with magnetic waves or acoustic signals. The problem with this protection was that it caused vibration even if mounted on the sides of the Puki. This caused some false alarms that slowed down the convoys. The South African company that produced the Milton landmine detecting pans was asked to produce them with a cylindrical guard, but the company refused and Mike Pelham, a young engineer at the University of Rhodesia, designed a circular guard. The Milton landmine detecting pans vibrated less while driving, causing far fewer false alarms. We do not know the theoretical effectiveness of Milton pans. In practice, from the reported data, it seems that they never failed to detect a mine. The TM-46 anti-tank mine, the main mine that they had to detect, was largely made of steel. Entering surface in late 1976, its first use was along the infamous Mount darwin Mukumbura Road, famous for being the most heavily mined road in Rhodesia and littered with exploded vehicle parts. The Puki, commanded by Lt. Patrick Gerick in this operation, found 12 mines, two landmines within 5 kilometers of Mount Darwin. Puki drivers began escorting convoys, traveling 200 kilometers a day and finding at least one mine for every convoy escorted. The Puki operated in front of the convoy at a distance of 50 to 100 meters. On its right and left side, at a safe distance, operated dog units with mine dogs trained to find mines. The dogs proved to be very useful, as the Puki could detect mines on a width of about 3 meters, leaving some portions of the road, normally between 4.5 meters to 5 meters wide, undetected. The first vehicle of the column was an armored personnel carrier equipped with a heavy machine gun, meant to respond effectively to possible ambushes. 
Thanks to these strategies, between 1976 and 1979, the Pukis found a total of 550 mines without ever detonating any. The 100% effectiveness against pressure mines was exceptional, and in a short time, the Zipra and Zanla militia realized that the Puki allowed the Rhodesian security forces to find all the mines they buried at night. They had to find a solution, resorting to using remote-controlled mines. 11 Pukis were lost to IEDs or remote-controlled mines, but the excellent design of this vehicle resulted in the death of only one driver under unclear circumstances. Another Pukie was lost during an ambush, an RPG-7 rocket that destroyed the vehicle and killed the driver. There are no reports of other Pukie ambush victims. After 1979, a few Pukie mine detection vehicles were used to clear inaccessible roads and were subsequently dismantled. A few remained rusting in warehouses in the new Republic of Zimbabwe from 1980 onwards. It has been estimated that millions of mines are still buried in 22 African countries, causing civilian casualties every 20 minutes on average. In 2019, there were 3,059 mine casualties, in addition to another 3,837 injured. Of this, 6,897 victims, 54%, were children. In 1999, the British Mine Tech International Company was looking for a vehicle that would exert a minimum ground pressure in order to install a ground penetrating radar GPR at the front. In late 1999, a Puki was recovered and refurbished to be able to mount this new mine detection system. The Milton detecting pans were removed. The low-pressure racing tires were replaced with the new racing tires, and the vehicle was repainted white. At the front, a 1.5-meter white mount was fitted with five 40-centimeter wide GPRs that could detect mine on a width of up to 2 meters. The first test of the Puki with the GPR took place in Somaliland in 2000, resulting in an excellent combination of old and new technology. The new front radar mount did not increase the weight of the Puki significantly, but MindTech International's new race tires were smaller in size than those used by the Rhodesian security forces in the 1970s. The smaller surface area translated into a ground pressure of 0.28 kg per cm2 that was still very low, allowing the Puki to cross minefields without danger of detonating even the smallest landmines. Finally, in 2001, the new Puki was sent to clear the roads of Senafe, 130 km south of Asmara in Eritrea, with the support of the Eritrean Mine Action Center. This first operation was to test the Puki in an operational theater. In six hours of operation, the Puki checked about 10 km of road at a speed of 5 km per hour. In fact, the roads were between 4.5 meters and 5 meters wide forcing the Puki to make three passes to completely check the ground. A trailer was also recovered in order to move the Puki. The vehicle's maximum speed of only 20 km per hour was too low to take it from the base to the area of operations. In general, the Puki performed very well, demonstrating how a technology developed in desperate circumstances with few means available was still useful 26 years after its development. MindTech International still used the Puki in Eritrea for mine detection with good results. In 2002, it was planned to recover a second vehicle to replace the first one in case of accidental detonation or in case the first one needed maintenance that would have forced it into the workshop for a long time. The Puki proved to be more than effective. Of the 76 vehicles produced, none accidentally detonated pressure mines detecting over 550 mines in about 3 years and losing only one driver in 11 incidents. When the United States Department of Defense began the MRAP program in 2007, they studied the Rhodesian and South African experiences with their mine-protected armored vehicles to develop the new vehicle class. Thank you for joining us for our video on the Puki. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.